Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome once again to another Faithful, Available and Teachable Talk, Conversations That Matter, brought to you by the Fidelis Leadership Institute. My name is Fiona Wall, and I'm excited to bring to you an eminent citizen of the Republic of Uganda who has served in various jurisdictions and currently actually serves in various jurisdictions. He is here to teach us about fintech innovation and budgeting support for digital transformation in finance. Uh, Tony Mugisha, our guest today, say hello to everybody. Uh, uh, thank you so much Fina, for inviting me here. Yes. It's an honor to be here uh, to my 24 TV. Uh, it's a pleasure. I think the topic is a very interesting one. I look forward to sharing and also learning from the audience as well because I, I believe life is, is a place for us to continuously learn. That's excellent. You're very welcome. Thank you. We have these fat talks every Thursday at this time and it's also on Twitter spaces and we are at Smart24 TV. We want to thank them, our partners. Uh, Tony Mugisha, just to tell you a little about Tony, he is a financial expert. He is the CEO at Eton Capital. Uh, he has a vast experience globally, like I've explained already in the past. He has worked with FedEx, Aramex, Shell across various continents and he's also an, a member of the International Franchise Association. He's going to tell us more about that. Uh, what would be exciting for people here is that he is a million dollar round table representative for Uganda, managing 79 family offices in the East African country region. I don't know how you do it, uh, uh, Tony. He, has of course is leading Eton Capital that I've told you about a life skilling enterprise in Uganda and he's married with four children uh, so ladies I'm sorry he's not single I know we got a lot of excitement over the flyer but he's not single and he also enjoys traveling with family and trying out new foods uh, our guest today is also passionate about helping individuals, families, and businesses attain financial freedom. And today, with that whole CV, we have Tony Mugisha here to tell us about uh, there's a lot of fintech innovation that's happening in the in the economic space that we're in right now but it's also happening in this particular economic uh, dispensation post covid and we all know that most of the innovation is happening um, among the young people who have so much so much energy so much passion so much brilliance ideas but uh, no financing so today we're here to speak about finance but first tony what does being a member of the of the uh, the, the federation <laughs> mean yeah the mdrt I yes it's, called, it's called an MDRT, mdrt the million dollar round table, round table. what's yes. that so the MDRT is a professional association for yes. financial advisors yes. and it encompasses the top 1% of global financial advisors. Wow. So, so you're in the top 1% of global financial advisors. Yes. That's excellent to know we're in good company. Thank you. Yes. And then what's, what's happening with the... Um, the Franchise Association, what's that? What's that about? Yeah, the yeah. Franchise Association is, uh, for example, like uh, uh, financial advisors. Yeah. I believe also lawyers. There are many times markets you cannot operate as, um, as, a, as a player. Mm. Not that you don't have the expertise, but because of the necessary uh, licensing requirements. Yes. So it, it's, it gives you value to be part of the international franchise model mm -hmm. where you as financial advisors, I can operate, let's say, out of the US yes. through an affiliated franchise. Mm. I can still guide my customer on what to do in terms of their financial planning, but actual implementation is done by a partner. So it is through such franchises that you're able to, to leverage mm. and be able to operate freely in, uh, uh, in, in the global market. Okay, that's excellent. So with all this licensing and all this experience, how many years have you been in at this? 13 years. 13 years. Yes. Uh, I need to ask because yeah. you look pretty young yeah. for such an accomplished individual. Yeah. But the generation, 
uh, the generation is I mean it's 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 this generation yes. that's really in charge right now yeah. so speaking of uh, tech innovation and preparing yourself to be in this space maybe just for the young listeners out there what's what what's been your inspiration how did you decide to get into this side of, um, of the economy all right into financial advisory yes yes I think pretty much of my uh, my experience with all the corporate companies I worked for, mm. I was more or less on the side of uh, uh, asset management, yeah. which is just a component of financial planning. Mm. But in my last six years, I mm. got so intentional to focus on family office and why family office. Because mm. I noticed that, if you probably don't know, mm. close to 85% of businesses globally are either owned by family or controlled by family. Mm. So from my experience working with these multinational companies and also being able to interact with some of the greatest families uh, I've worked with over the period of time, I noticed that if we do not give attention to the family which family office, yes. then chances are high that we, over a period of time, yes. will see wealth transfer away from families. Right yes. now the biggest control is still controlled by family. Mm. And that's on the upper side because like I've shared, we are working in micro markets. But where is Uganda, where I come from? Mm. I believe Uganda, we, we are still at the tail end, which gives us an advantage because we can easily then prepare to better leverage. To better leverage. Definitely. Yes. So I, I intentionally decided to focus on the family office pretty much in the last six years. So take me through, um, you said you represent about 79 family businesses, yes. right? Yes. What does that mean? Okay. Family offices. Family offices. Yes. What does what do you mean by well, family offices? It's a family in in business. Yeah. So what usually happens is um, family led, like Mukwano. Absolutely. Okay. Family led um, mm. or family originated. Yes. Uh, because people think that family offices are run by family members. Some yeah. family businesses some, some, some. are not run by family members. So if if you want to look at it in Uganda's context. Uh, in the families we work with, by the out of the 79 families, mm. I think in Uganda we work with uh, 11 families. 11? Yes. Only? Only. That's sad. Yes. So, so where are the majority of these families Nairobi. from? Nairobi. Nairobi. Yes. Okay. Nairobi, then we have, uh, I think, a number of them in the Middle East, about yes. seven in the Middle East. Yes. We have uh, also a number of them in Asia. Yes. And we also see in our market in the Northern America also growing. Is your company Ugandan grown? Yes, we are Uga it's a Ugandan company. So we oh, are we're very proud. Proudly Ugandan. Yes. yes. Okay, so go on. I interrupted okay. you. Yes. So. Uh, for the fam for the families here in Uganda, yes, you, you probably want to ask where do we start from because even the big families started somewhere. Absolutely. Right? But one thing we keep sharing with our customers and the families we get to work with, no wealth is transferred by mistake. Absolutely. It doesn't self-execute. Yeah. There's a process that has to be followed. Yeah. So it's one thing to create the wealth. It's another thing to preserve it. To pass it, it on. I think it's different to transfer it, and it's another thing to to create a legacy. Mm. So there are different processes and steps that we follow to be able to to make a family office now initially you could not create a family office unless the family was worth mm. initially you could not create a family office unless the network was above three million dollars yes but that has changed mm. today you can create a family office with as low as half a million dollars really as a bare minimum. Uh. yes so again, even less <laughs> Yeah, what this, do you mean creating a family office? Creating a family office is not just wishing that we are a family and then we are in business. Yeah. You actually need to have a, uh, a very structured process. Yeah. Uh, and in that process, you use very many instruments. Mm. Uh, what you call a family office, there are families that have been able to create wealth in a particular place, mm. being able to diversify in other markets and continue to grow. Because mm. when we talk about family, mm. we talk about three types of wealth. There's human capital and there's intellectual capital and there's the financial capital. So many people tend to focus on the financial capital, which is the money and the assets, and, but the other two elements, which is the human capital and the intellectual capital. Human capital is what, uh, what all the family members, uh, the number of family members, and intellectual capital is what all family members know mm. and how do they share it amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. So assuming you're a family that has maybe 20 family members uh, across the globe, and you have maybe some lawyers, you have some businessmen, yeah, and, and most of them probably wish to do their own profession. They, they want to take part yes. in family business, but, but they also have this them. thing they're passionate about. Mm. So how do we create a structure that allows 
members that want to work in the family work in the family but those who want to pursue their own exploits can continue to pursue mm. but still be involved in family mm -hmm. so the structure that goes around that to be able to create what we call fair versus equal or what we call equality within the family because that's, that's a very interesting topic yes. within the family. so it's broad family office is quite a broad topic mm. so pretty much that's what we do we don't do it alone uh, most of our customers have lawyers they have tax planners because you, depending on the size of your estate you actually need a tax you need planner. advisors at every level yes. so what does it look like right now you have only 11 families you're representing and that means you manage their capital How, what yeah. do you do exactly okay we literally advise them we don't manage anything oh you're just financial yes. advisors our model is not just but yes. you know what i mean yes our model is one that allows to transfer knowledge mm. we don't want to be like a hedge fund mm. which says hey if you're gonna bring your money we'll give you amount x and if you're happy after the end of the year maybe give us more money we don't do that mm. we believe in transferring the knowledge we believe that if we equip the family yes they should be able to pass on that knowledge to the raising generation mm. yes it doesn't put us out of business because then we're able to support other businesses so these 79 uh, businesses that you've grown are any of them listed no none of them none is of listed. them is listed yes is that an option you advise families to go for well uh depending on the family strategy yeah but usually uh, the dynamics of family business in sub-saharan africa i wouldn't recommend a family to go listed yeah because of very many other uh, i only recommend all structure families to go public where we are trying to create uh, where there's no very clear continuity plan mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. in families oh, yes. then that becomes a very good option for us but mm -hmm. if we still have other options on, on, on the table why not <laughs> so are you advising families not to practice family planning <laughs> in order to ensure continuity because i've noticed that the more affluent families actually have fewer children you find uh you find maybe the madvanis or the metas may have one or two children yes. or the i don't know which other families you yeah. have there the the mukwanos i yes. think have two or three yeah. so how how does that come in because you know we've seen different economies especially the bricks yes they might be limiting children now but there was a time they were encouraging people to yes. populate the earth yes yeah you so what's your what's your <laughs> As a financial advisor, yeah. uh, what's your, what would be, it, it doesn't have to be orthodox. Yes. What would be your advice? No, definitely everything needs planning. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we are in an era where you cannot take any chance mm. on anything. Mm. You literally need to plan anything. But one of the things that's interesting, I mean, and this comes from a context of working pretty much like in three continents, mm. the people tend to this be This is busy. Africa, Asia. Yes, and, and the US. And the US, yes. okay. So what usually happens, not that these guys or families tend to have few children. Yes, some do plan because they extensively plan. I mean, I work with some of the families where we plan for third generation. Wow. Especially in the Middle East right now, many people are actually planning for third, fourth generation. Because most people in the Middle East, it's really second generation. Mm. Uh, and also many are first-time wealth creators, like Uganda. Mm. Uganda, I think most of us... Are first-time wealth creators. Yes. Mm. So we have very few... Families that have gone before, yeah. Yes, of, of course. Due to confidentiality, I can't mention the mm. families. But we also have some families where we are, I think, on fourth generation in Uganda. Fourth? But fourth. Nice. But sometimes uh, people think that to create fourth generation need a lot of wealth. Mm. Sometimes it's you being able to create a system Channel that should be systems. able to ab absorb that opportunity once yes. it comes. So yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a broad topic. It's a broad topic when we talk mm. about um, families. But back to your question. Mm. Do they plan to have few kids? Mm. They tend to be busy. Oh, they're too busy to they make babies. They are too, too busy, <laughs> yes. No, I understand that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, you talked about being intentional. Yeah. And sometimes if your desire is to have a family business, yes. and your desire is to make it to the fourth, fifth generation you have to be intentional also Absolutely. about making sure that you have progeny to yes. take over yes whether you're, you're adopting them yes. or you're actually getting them from your dna yeah. um what and, and for me i'm looking from a strategy perspective yes. because human resource is the first one yes so what would you as a financial advisor ask yeah. or let me know about because 
if I told you that right now I want to start yes. with the world generation, yes. um, would you say, uh, you know, Fiona, with just one child, <laughs> yeah. so, that might be an issue? No, I, I um, you know, in our industry, there's no one size fits all. Yes. But what I can say for, when we talk about a family, we don't, it's not only about the children. Mm. We have spouses in there. Okay? Mm. Because spouses also do play a part. Spouse dynamics. Yes, they yes. do play a part. I mean, I've worked with some of the families where uh, we notice that the, the key resource that we need is actually spouse to one of the family members. Mm. And then the question is, how do, family, how do spouses play a part in the family business? Mm. So we need to define that as well. Today, and their, their interests as well. Today, where we work with second or third generation families, mm. especially in Asia, the spouse, because historically, it was the men who were coming to the Into table. Into the table. Mm. Today, I'm we into the seeing, table, yeah. Today we are seeing very many spouses, ladies, ladies. going into uh, families, not joining families, are coming with significant work. Mm. So then how do we discuss that? The dowry. So, definitely. So the element of spouses on how they play part in family business is also very key. Mm. But yes, the number, the number is very important. Numbers give you leverage. Mm. But like I shared, not all family businesses are led by, by family. family. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I like that. Yeah. Now, um, at the Leadership Institute, at, at here on Fat Talks, yeah. one of the things we're trying to do is create ethical leaders. And we pick our guests very carefully. Yeah. And uh, we know of your reputation. How much do you think something like ethics contributes to the success of uh, innovators, yes. startups, even family businesses. Yes. Yes. Any uh, business. Yes. Uh, I think ethics is a foundation. There's no way around it. Mm. Uh, in my experience, over the corporations, I've been lucky to have worked for multinationals mm. through my entire career. And I think one of the biggest things that we take away from, I mean, from FedEx to RMX to Shell, is there are things you can compromise with, but you can compromise with ethics. With ethics, Definitely. you can say that again. There are things you can compromise with. Say that to the cover. There are things you can compromise <laughs> with, but ethics is one of them that you cannot really compromise. Uh, compromise yeah, yes. So. Um, in that case, uh, first of all, one of the things that I read about you is you're also passionate about innovation and supporting innovation. Um, what would you say about our market? What would be your analysis of our fintech market right now in Uganda? Well, for, I must say that our fintech market is, well, I think let me compare it to the region. Yes. And also be able to compare to it, compare the market before what it is right now. Compared to the region, I don't think we're doing much, uh, well compared to our, our neighbors. Yeah. I think Kenya, Kenya has, has a number of hubs. You can see the kind of support that's coming in from, uh, from government. Google. And you're seeing all these big Silicon Valley. Setting, setting yeah. for, uh, forth there. And a number of other countries. I think in the region, I think maybe we're ahead of Tanzania. Yes, because I, I think even Chigali is doing quite well. Definitely. Mm. But that said, I think there's something. We, we are trying to do something. Yes. What it is right now, I think, gives us a, a very good uh, hope. Mm. I think that's the right word to use. Why? Because from my experience in our financial space, I think if I share from our, our, fin from our industry point of view, mm. it would really make sense. Yes. About four years ago, part of what we do is also we we write protection for our customers. Mm. So one of the most important, one of the most interesting thing is, uh, one of the most interesting thing that we, I can share in this space. Mm. Before COVID, mm -hmm. for someone to underwrite a policy, all right, which is a life insurance policy, yes. you pretty much need a batch of documents like this. <laughs> Yes. Okay, and you literally had to work with your client to the doctor to get the the, the different the appointments medical to do the medical assessment. Like that. Once that is done, then move the document to the underwriters, and then once that's done, then have someone follow up the documentation. Once that is done, follow up the policy document and figure out where it's coming from. Now, COVID happens. Mm. 
the entire process has been made online. Which is fantastic, right? It, it's something that will take you pretty much about five to seven days, the physical process. Mm. Now can easily take you 45 minutes. Mm. That's innovation. That's innovation. Mm. But what's driving it's fintech. Yes. Because without the fintech, and, and the guys who have been supporting this system are very young guys. Mm. I've had an opportunity to meet them. I think the eldest is about 27 or 28. Mm. And I was amazed. I said, if the young guys <laughs> can actually do this, yeah. what more can be done? And that's only one industry. Well, you can imagine what else is happening in healthcare, what's happening into transport, what is happening into telecom and many other sectors. I don't know what is happening in the, in law, the, legal, in the legal department. There's a lot, yes. Yeah. Mm. So I, I think from where we are coming from, there's lots of ground that has been covered. Yes. There's still a lot to be covered. But I think we need to create an environment that allows them to, to explore. Exactly. Um, so where, and that's where our topic comes in, uh, helping fintechs uh, access financing for their innovation. Um, in, your, in your experience, especially in the region, what model works? Because there's been, and, and I've been involved with uh, tech development for a long time, not yeah. as a tech person, yeah. but yeah. as a support okay. person. Um, we ha we've had uh, innovation hubs and, and supporters, people yeah. that give some support, even especially in the legal sector yeah. with the Hague in Innovation for, in uh, sorry, Institute, Hague Institute for Innovations in yeah. Law. Yeah. We yeah. have, and we've had a lot of, um, not fintechs necessarily, but tech innovations bloom, especially yeah. legal tech, okay. like barefoot law and yes. examples like that. Now, one of the things I have noticed is there are certain threats to fintech innovation that come with financing. Yeah. Sometimes the financiers will require a prototype yeah. before you even protect it, yes. IP uh, issues and things like that. So in the market, you've seen, you know, the, the, the attempts in the region, in Chigali, in Nairobi, in the market. What is your experience? What would you advise works when it comes to financing? Okay. Uh, it's, it's quite broad. Mm. Uh, I'll speak from a perspe perspective of the finance side yeah. because the tech side is a, it's, it's, that something it's, else. It's something yeah. else. But I think we, we've also been involved in a bit of, uh, of trying to put together some financials for, I think, about three tech companies. Mm. And I think one of the biggest challenges, mm. the biggest challenges is the, the developers or the, 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 yeah, I think they're yes, developers, the developers, right? Yes, the developers, yes. The developers get, uh, do not have the rightful support. They have the rightful tech support. Mm but forget to create the support system, the legal side, yes, the, the, structure, the support. structure side. Yes. And sometimes it's very important that you create it early enough. Because that Before able, you have too much. Definitely. Yes. Because most of the times, and I think all the projects we've handled, is, is working backwards, mm. where you, you now have a financial who wants certain things that have to be created. Then you start creating. And then you, want, you have to work backwards. Our colleagues on the other end are actually have using a different model. Mm. I'll share with you what the Kenyans are using. Mm -hmm. I hope the guy, there are people who are listening here. Because <laughs> we've also been privileged to syndicate one in Kenya. Okay. Uh, it should be finalized, I think, in the next three, four months. Yes. Significant Congratulations. Yes. 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 So what these guys do is they get the legal person and tell them, listen, we don't have money right now. Mm. But we, we know you have the legal expertise. This is what we want to do. What we want to assure you is we want to give you interest equity, in this. yes, give you equity. And from the word oh, go, that's amazing. You have a person covering your legal interest, you have a financial, a financial advisor. advisor who's saying, Listen, who also has some interest, definitely has some interest. Yeah, and um, the one we are working on right now because it has an implication in about I think 21 African countries, mm. then we need tax planners in each of in those. In each of those so countries. So they've partnered with a, a tax planner out of Nairobi, mm. that out of Nairobi who should be able to cover the interests across. Yes. So you notice that from the word go, they're saying, listen, if, if, if this works out at a specific period, of, at, a, at, a, at a time T, yes. we are ready for that. Okay. Then you don't have to work backwards. And by the way, when you do that, the turnaround time is fast. Mm. The turnaround, so that the developers actually focus on 
that's developing. that's excellent i like what you've said we should not wait for funding to happen to us someone said don't wait for success to take you by surprise yes yes so we're going for a short break but one thing we always do is as we go for the break is we always have our guests tell us one lie okay three things yes. and one or two of them should be a lie okay and on the other needs to be true and they should be about you uh, you will not tell us which one is a lie and which one is true okay. it will be up to the audience and the listeners to uh, tell us what this is so we're going into a short break right now um, those on Twitter spaces you can go grab a cup of coffee those with us on TV you can just watch for the adverts and I just want to let you know that we're going to have the Fidelis uh, Fat Fellowship uh, program that will be starting on August the 5th and we hope that we'll have young people signing up for this 16 uh, month program the 16 week program thank you very much Smart 24, driving business. Luxury redefined at Sea Hotel. As you indulge in the splendor of elegant living, fit for the royalty that you are. Step into comfort, pampering and blissful customer-centric service as you select from our range of comfy, exquisite living quarters furnished to meet with your royal preference. Surrounded by scenic beauty, our tropical setting allows you to escape the clamorous odor of city life. Our ambient green gardens will guide you to a place of revitalizing rest. The three-star restaurant caters to your palate, serving your choice menu ranging from exotic cuisines to local delicacies. Our chefs will serve you full course meals for a truly out-of-this-world culinary experience. Our fully stocked bar to wet your throat from renowned global brand whisks, brandies, jeans, beers and wines to our locally celebrated beverages, you will not lack for any brewage. It's an all new experience in the East at Seasun Hotel, so visit today at Plot 15 to 19 Spire Road Ginger or contact us on plus 256-751. 719-960 and plus 256-785-354-614 for reservations. Seas and Hotels. Luxury Redefined. Smart 24 Driving business. Thank you, ladies. Once again, we are here talking about fintech innovation and how to access financing for it. Uh, we are speaking with Tony Mujisha, team leader, Eton Capital, that operates in various countries on three continents in financial advisory services. Uh, Tony was telling us just before the break about um, what makes it work when it comes to accessing financing for fintechs. And I think he gave us a very good idea of, you know, before you have a house, before you build a house, you need to have a firm foundation. And sometimes fintechs in Uganda let, I don't know, they sort of put up the walls before the foundation is solid. And then when they get the financials, they start going back to try and put up a solid foundation. So you've shared what you've seen in other markets that works, which means you can establish a foundation of advisory services without necessarily capitalizing them. You just could work with the issue of equity capital. And as I speak, one of the things that we've been trying to encourage our businesses, especially fintechs and other innovators, is to 
actually structure their businesses so that they're sellable to, to, to equity investors. But again, you need a lot of financial liter literacy for that. Where can people get this kind of information? Well, the, the, I think the, the easiest way for you to be able to do that is getting an equity partner. Yeah. Because anyone else will actually charge you for that. Yes. I mean, if you came to Aiton Capital, we'd definitely have to charge for People that. People are scared of losing control. Yeah, but, you know, controlling of something, 100% of something that's not big is, is not worth it. You'd rather give out give a bit of, of Give out a bit and get bigger. Absolutely. Mm. Because w when you give them equity, for example, like we, if they gave you equity, mm. you're literally going to do even more than what you probably do once you're paid, if you're paid for that. Yes. I'll tell you why. Because you, if you will not go in unless you're too sold. Because... Not every equity partner will just accept. Yeah. Because if you, if a developer came up and said, Tony, we, we're looking for financing for this, and if I believe in that solution, chances are high I'll ask for equity as mm. my trade off. Mm. Because most times you don't know whether to work out. And most of these uh, fintechs, the percentages show that not very many work out. Absolutely. Yeah, so, one of the cheapest ways that you can actually access that is through equity. It's through equity. Yeah. Okay. So it's actually, it increases the, the chances of, of it working out. Yeah. So online we had uh, another, we had uh, somebody called Trevor who wanted to speak. Trevor, please speak to us. Uh, he had a question for Tony. Trevor, you can unmute and speak. Like, hey everyone, sorry, I think I'll get, like I was writing down something, eh? like I'll get, uh, the question will come later, I'm still listening something, I'm adding up something. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, as we were continuing, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is, uh, we've done some work as Fidelis Leadership Institute with uh, fintechs especially with the fintech association of uganda fitspa okay. and we we saw them design the, there's something that they designed that i think i don't know whether it was with Eton capital or okay. where they were able to create prospectuses to okay. invite equity partners and angel investors mm -hmm. and i thought that that was a very fantastic way for the association to help the fintechs access capital what would you say um, the, the the element and the need the, the element of social capital yeah. of getting involved in a bigger association or sort of uh, congregating with other people of like mind? Yeah. Uh, how do you how much do you think that would contribute to accessing finance for a fintech? Well, uh, of course. Social capital is very, very important. Yes. Uh, if you look in our market, because I want to focus on our market, mm. most, so, most social associations really are not, they're not used really for business development. Yes. It's an unfortunate part. Yes. Um, yet, I believe if we focus a lot in that direction, we should be able to see a lot of progress. Mm. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Mm. So is it going to work in the fintech? I think in the fintech association, we look at things like, um, the regulation, what is happening, but for raising finance, I think there's a lot that has to be. Oh, yes. why, I'll tell you the reason why, because in that association, pretty much the, the finance function is not there. Because mm. I believe it should have been the associations putting together a number of of um, uh, partners. Yes, uh, we need a legal partner, maybe as. Oh, one creating their foundation Definitely. and benefiting from the economies of scale. Yes. Ah, you know when um, w one of the things that uh, I have actually th seen is when I was president of Law Society. One of the things we did was we got together as associations. Yes. And we fought the there was a trade licensing issue yeah. that was creating double regulation. Yes. But I realized that the social capital, the the, the economies that yeah. came with all of us being together, yeah. it, it reduced the burden on any one of us doing the work. Yes. But it also gave us a bigger voice for advocacy. So I like that. And I think that uh, if if people are listening out there, 
um, I, I know we have circles. Yes. <laughs> let's let's leave, move, walk away from Twintex and go into just, you know, yeah. financial self-help projects like yes. circles. So if, if, if 30 circles got together, they'd be able to access huge financing yes. that would actually they could actually form a bank absolutely and yet we we would rather stay in this circle that gives me 300k every yes. six months yes so thank you very much for that clarity i feel like i should start um, a, a fintech of my <laughs> own so one of the things that fintech innovators look for and i think innovation usually comes from the hunger to to solve problem yeah and in your experience and without you know breaking any confidentiality regulations mm. and things like that what are some of the most successful fintechs you know of and why do you think they have been successful okay um, especially in accessing finance okay I think the most successful one just comes off my head mm. uh, is um, in the healthcare space yes in the healthcare space, there's this fintech, like you said, I can't go into the details. <laughs> but literally, what these guys were doing were um, they, they, they chose to automate the medication process mm. for the specific, I think they are diabetic. Yes. Uh, they are diabetic and uh, HIV and um, something oh, chronic else. Chronic illnesses. Chronic illnesses. Yes. So they noticed that if they did automate that process and and uh, created a system which would allow not the patient mm. but the people who care about the patient yes to know to know and be able to replenish and be able to ah. to track actually how much is left i need that up <laughs> <laughs> i have i have so, people who have had issues and, heart and, disease and when you talk about solving a, a problem yes I mean, the problem is not only for the person who's experiencing it, but the people around the, them. The, the support system. The support system around yes. them. So the inconvenience of someone leaving work to go and drive. And to, check on mommy. Yes. Or yeah. pick. Or pick drugs. And have them delivered. Them delivered, yes. Now having you, uh, having a system that can actually help you and prompt you. Mm. All you have to do is have uh, a balance on, on, on your account. So you, In order you for move. medication yeah, to so arrive. Yeah, auto debit and... Yes. And why am I sharing that? It's, uh, it is someone being able to sit down and say, okay, fine, where's the problem? Now, in the healthcare space, even in our space here it's in Uganda, it's access. I, I, I don't think the fintech guys are doing much yeah. in that space. You don't think they're doing enough? Yes, and guess what? There's lots of finance available in that space. Really? In the healthcare. I hope you've had uh, technology experts that are online right now and on Smart24 TV there's a lot of money out there for health, fintech, and medical yes. and, and, and energy, yes. energy fintechs yes. like solar energy and, and yeah. the likes. Oh that's excellent. Uh, now, so you think that the, the levels of success also depend on the, on the subject matter? Yes. Yes. The scalability, uh, the, I think there are three things. Mm -hmm. First, I think the scalability because any investor or any person any wants to look at wants, scale. Yeah, he wants yeah. to look at something for the long term. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second is how big is the problem? Yes. Yeah. And now, investors don't only want to make money, they want to feel there's a part of CSR on it. They're, they're tr it's transformative. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, the, your ability to be able to get not just an app or something that is, but something that is able to deliver those three to things. To solve a problem, have, be scalable, and have social impact. Absolutely. Yes. That's excellent. I think, I think that actually applies for innovations across the board. Yeah. Uh, what happens to um, IP, intellectual property? How much does that play into finance, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no, I, I would not advise any, any of my clients to put, invest in something without an IP. It doesn't make without any sense. Without an IP, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. Why? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm being basic here. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's, I mean, why? IP is intellectual property, yes. and that means you own the design. Yes. And it is registered because it is who is registered that owns it. Definitely. Because yes. it's, it's, it's like uh, having this big basket mm. and then. You keep pouring in what water with lots of holes in it. Yes. 
I know what these guys go through too. Mm. At least I work with some of them. I know what it takes to, from concept development to actual implementation. I, I, you would not really wait for that point in time where you're going to do all the heavy lifting. Yes. Only for someone to come. I, and, and, I, and for me I as a take it up. Definitely. And for me as a financial advisor, it's really not protecting the actual, but protecting the clients. Mm. Because no single client goes in to, uh, to just hope. They really, they're going in to make money mm. in the long term. As a financial advisor, how much uh, due diligence do financiers make, on, especially on issues like IP? We actually don't do that. Mm. We ask in most of that kind of job, yes. we probably wouldn't go for it alone. We actually would ask. One of the first things we need to advise the, the client is who is your legal representative? Mm -hmm. Because we are not lawyers. We can't, we can't interpret <laughs> the law. Yeah. We are numbers, numbers guys. So we, on the financial side, we can take care of that. And, that's, and I think that's one of the things that has kept us and has keeps, us, keeps us very unique in the, in the market. Mm. Because very many financial advisors will say, we can do the job and get a, get a legal person. We want to make sure the client works with their legal, legal representative. Mm. Depending also on the, on the kind of scalability we are looking at, we probably also would want to have a tax plan available. Absolutely. Because well, tax can actually do <laughs> it can, it can wipe you. out everything. Yes. So if and I believe very, very many financial advisors will tell you the same thing. Mm. So one of the things that really and actually most people, most people do it here, they even the fintechs. I know some fintechs that have been able to access money here, and guess what? They are only developers and maybe a legal representative, and they've not involved a financial advisor and they've not involved a tax mm. planner. Guess what? And then these people come in. And wow. changes everything, changes yes. the outlook. Changes the model, the outlook, the scalability, everything. Everything. So you need to have the whole works. You need to have the structure right from the word go. So you so. don't go to the garden without a hope. Absolutely. So we have to tighten our belts. The yeah. fintech space is obviously not an easy one. Yes. Um, in your experience, where do, does fintech innovation usually root from? Is it from the technological part? Is it the problem solvers, the philanthropists, or is it the financiers who are looking into business models? I think it's the developers. It's the developers yeah. who usually initiate these things. Yes. So what are you doing as fintech experts, uh, sorry, as financial advisors, to, to grow the capacity of developers to understand the need for this uh, technical, systemic infrastructure you're talking about? Yes. Thanks, Walt. We, well, as Aton Capital, we're doing lots of things. Uh, yes. We push out lots of videos. We're not only targeting only the fintechs. Yes. We believe that everyone out there has something great. Mm. We believe that great idea can still be automated or it can actually become a, the next fin, big, big fintech. The next big thing. Yeah. So mm. what we are doing is we are saying, listen, as any person planning to do business, there are basics you need to understand. Yes. There are key factors of... Uh, of finance that we bear, we need to have as right from school. Mm. So what are we doing as Aiton Capital? We've done lots of partnerships with a number of asso uh, associations. We actually do speak to them. We do lots of videos which we share out yes. for people to, those that are able to view and pick one or two things that they can implement mm. in their business. And that's, that's what we are limited to right now. But we still look at uh, opportunities that are available as and when uh, we can play our part. Mm. We, we, we we fold our sleeves and, and, and get and get get work done. Okay. Um, in that case, when it comes to access to finance, one of the things that has been happening is we've had some <laughs> litigation in the region, yeah. especially in Uganda, that talks about against things like syndicating, uh, which well we've had uh, from other financial experts yeah. that this is like telling the lungs you don't need oxygen yeah. so please explain about syndicating and why it is necessary yeah well uh, like you shared like you just shared it we can't do without it yes well, why because there right now the world is a global village mm. today um, we are having multiple companies having multiple presence, both 
being there as branch offices or being there as partners in specific businesses. Yeah. And the free movement of capital is also very important. Mm. L- let me take it down this way. Fiona, if you, are, if you have some significant wealth, right? Yes. And you have been able to make some investments in this country, in mm. Uganda, your own country. Mm. And you see a very good investment, let's say, in a nearby country or in another market, and you are able to actually enjoy that benefit. Now you become internationally backed. Now, if you can enjoy a benefit for an investment that's in another market, why wouldn't you use the same way, the same approach to do the reverse? Yes. Now, it becomes a problem because of legislation. But, and something that's happening in the finance, I'll share with you what's happening in the finance space. This thing of AI is going to change there are no borders. Dynamics. Yes. It's already happening. There are no borders in AI. Yes. Yeah. And why is this thriving? It's because of such borders and, and barriers that are being created. Mm. Now, the, the, the world that we are going to, that you and me, or maybe our kids will enjoy, is one... We're already enjoying. Is, definitely. That one without or any, suffering it. Yes. So what do you have to do you as an individual? Do you avoid it or do you embrace it? Mm. And I think you're better off being on the side of embracing it. So in, fi- in finance, there's no way you can survive without syndicating. Mm. There's no way you're going to get value. And it's both ways. Because you're value. hedging your risk. Yes. Mm. So it's, um, again, I know it's, it's, it's in the courts of law, but I, I believe it's for the best interest for, uh, for the country to allow those kind of syndicating. Yes. Yeah. It's so broad that we may not be able to exhaust it here. <laughs> it needs a, a day on its own yes. on why it works perfectly a- across, for, the board. across the board. And one of the things that also comes then comes out then is, I guess you, as the financial as financial advisors, I think it's also good for you to build a foundation for this economy to 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 rise to the standards of others. And you would have to do this by educating all the advisors in the economy. Because if we have the judiciary speaking one voice, yes. uh, sorry, something else apart away from the financials, yes. then it causes problems. Like yes. you're seeing now, it's creating very dangerous precedent. Yeah. So what are you as uh, the fintech space or the financial advisors doing to sort of demystify these things for other sectors yeah. that, whose advice affects your business? Well, we, I'll only speak for... Whose advice eight. and training affects yes. your business? I think we, I'll speak on behalf of Aiton Capital. It yes. wouldn't be right to speak yes. for the entire association because we, we don't even have an association. <laughs> so I'm hoping we can create... The million-dollar people. Yeah, uh, the MDRT. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, so I think what, what we are doing as Aiton Capital, we have lots of collaborations, especially with the law for fraternity. Mm-hmm. We have very many clients of ours that, especially high network clients, yes. and... Sometimes they get where they are, they don't know how they got there. Mm. And then we go back to the basics and tell them that now we need to create this structure, but we need to have a lawyer on board. Mm. Say, no, why do I need a lawyer? Say, no, we, we, we are not lawyers. We can't do the work of a lawyer. So yes. we need a lawyer on board. So what we have done as Little Capital, we've created partnerships with law firms. So where we see an opportunity and we see a client really needs, especially our clients, mm. there are legal, uh, legal partnerships that we have where we recommend the client to go to the legal Expert, the legal expert, okay, yes. to, to, to have them come on board. Mm. Same thing has also happened. We've had lawyers the right now saying, because now we've harmonized and uh, the, the law, the law, the people in the law fraternity the that we work fraternity. with mm. have come to understand that hold on, actually, financial planning is a different thing, it's not in my space, mm. and uh, it's not something I can do, it's not something I yes. can do. It's, we are doing it across as well. But usually for us, there are three fraternities we work with. That's the mm. um, the legal fraternity and the and the tax planning. The yes. people fail to understand that tax planning is not accountant. It's not. It's totally different. Yes. So they are tax experts in that in that space. For the rest, we haven't done much. Why? Because there's not much coming <laughs> across. I think, I, think we need I, to think, do I think we need to find we'll, find a way of yes. even introducing some of these. Uh, classes even in the Judicial Training Institute yes. because I'm sure you know the unfortunate thing is that judicial officers are expected to know everything yeah. and they don't they're human yes. yeah. so they need training so thank you so much uh, I, I wanted this point to ask for your 
lies and truths about yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> on the Fidelis Leadership Fat Talks that we have every week on Thursday at 4 p.m., we usually have interesting guests who we believe have uh, stood out among us all and they've done so ethically and we want to create an example of them because we don't want our young people to believe that it's only the wicked that prosper. So one of the things that we do is we ask our guests to tease us on, on our knowledge of them. So today we are asking Tom, what is it about you that is true or a lie? Just tell us three things. Our audience will be left to decide okay. and we'll see how much they know you. You'll do the great reveal at the end. All right. Okay, the first one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy working out. So, uh -huh. okay. You enjoy working out? Yes. Yes. The second one. I take only one meal a day. Yes. You okay, interesting. And the last one is I enjoy sitting in traffic. You <laughs> You enjoy having one meal a day. You enjoy traffic. No, I, I have one meal. You have one meal a day. You enjoy sitting in traffic and you are a fitness gym, you know, uh, fad. So Members, does Tom Mujisha love the gym? Does he love to eat only, does he eat one meal a day? And or, and or, does he love uh, sitting in traffic jams? Has he found good use for traffic jams? Ladies and gentlemen, these are our three items of which you shall choose which is true and which is a lie. Our Twitter admin will put it out there and let's have a poll going about Tom, Tony Mujisha. So FinTech innovation, budgeting support for digital transformation. How does someone come up with a budget? I think we also need to talk about that. We talked about accessing finance, but how do we also plan financially uh, from start to finish? Yeah. Because uh, Strategy is huge. Somebody yes. said, uh, I think it's Sang Zhu, who said that strategy is 80% of the war. Mm -hmm. So going into the war room without a budget would be murder, would be suicide, yes. which is what most people are going to. Yeah. So what, uh, first of all, two things. One, how are you as Eton Capital helping your, the market do this? And two, do you have tools to enable people to budget for such things or uh, do you have if, if i went to your website would i find some templates yeah uh which you know you yeah. know these templates these days uh, yes. they get commercialized the more you use them <laughs> but it's okay yeah. so how far have you gone as it on capital to help people understand what size their cloth is so they can measure their dress according to that yeah well, the one, one of the most important things is what we have done as Ayton Capital and why we focus on Because when you look at Ayton Capital, we focus on individuals, families, and enterprise. Because the enterprise starts from an individual. Yes. Now, there's no way you're going to learn about budgeting when you're not doing budgeting yourself. As an individual. As an individual. Okay. So that's why... We're that, training individuals. Definitely. That's why we need Financial to start from. Financial planning. Yes, because if we teach you how to have a budget as an enterprise, yes. trust me, it will just be just like any other document you're keeping. Yes. Because budgeting starts from an individual basis. Mm. And once you know, because like a culture, you create a financial planning is like a culture. Absolutely. You take it from an individual basis and then you move it to the, the group family basis. and then you move it to an enterprise. Yes. So the reason why you see very many fintechs don't have budgets, like you said. Mm. Actually, the number's about over 80%. Mm. Oh, yeah. they don't have budgets? Yeah. Hey. They don't have budgets. So, <laughs> the thing is... Someone, the Muganda would say, very <laughs> and, 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 and So, if a financial came up and said, how much money do you need, they wouldn't know. Yeah, where, where you at now? That's For a question. how long? Yeah, that's a question. They wouldn't yeah, because most of the times when we wow. tell our, our, our clients one Is that in Uganda or the region? The region. Wow, okay. Yeah, and mm. in Uganda, because we don't have mm. anywhere we can pick that data. Yeah. So, uh, which is still a very big challenge. By the way, FinTech guys should figure out where we can get data because with data we're able to make. I think as advisors, you should come up with something we can fill up. Maybe. Yeah, it's an option. <laughs> 
Now I'm yeah. being your business yes. advisor. So I think maybe we need to come up with something. Yeah, because that tool would probably mean money for you as yes, well. Yes, because one of the one of the challenge, and if we do not fix it, I'll share with you something more that mm. today, all family, all people holding a household, mm. if today anything happened to any of the family members, yeah. trust me, 95% of families don't know how to proceed. Absolutely. You know somebody, one of the wealthiest lawyers I know in this country, I hope he's listening, told me that each of us is one illness away from bankruptcy. And it's true, because I've seen really wealthy people perish from a long illness, and then they leave their families in debt, Yes. and then that's it. Yeah. And you know about critical illness? And the whole, you know? And I like that you brought about the critical illness. Because yeah. the challenge with critical illness, it, does, it doesn't only lose, you don't only lose income for one person. Mm -mm. Some other person has to leave their work to be able to attend to you. The time so cost, the, yeah. So sometimes it may cost two or three lots of income. So the question is, how are you protected in such an arrangement? From such critical things. That's what we do as financial planners. Yeah. Because if you're such a big asset, yes. and that's one of the most important things, and by the way, no big investor is going to put money mm. on a fintech when the developer or the key asset not, yeah. doesn't have life insurance. Really? Yes, actually, there's one we were working on, and <laughs> it was actually a deal breaker. So they, oh, they, especially the developer, yeah. because so, if he dies, the, yeah. the, the fintech so, is dead. So the investor told me, Tony, just... As you're doing all the final parks and having all the papers getting ready to, mm. he says, but what happens when this something happens to this? What student? kind? What kind of coverage do I have? Yes. How, Tony, how do I get back my money? And it's, it's one of those things that, and that's why we got so involved right now in life insurance. So you're taking out policies on people. <laughs> it, 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 it's like you see, getting investor ready. Yes. That's one of the things because if you have and a the kid, beneficiary is the investor. It depends. Okay. It depends on on how we now that the integrity yes. on how we structure how it, depending structure on how we negotiate it, and mm. but it's very important. So because we have to look at all these things, we never put value to our lives. Mm. And if this thing is to and, work, and yet yes, that's the foundation. Yes. I mean, it's your brand. Yeah. So yeah. You if someone what went we, Eton, yes, they would want you to be insured. <laughs> one one of the things that we tell most of our customers when we start out, yes, it's not about. And actually, many customers come to us with the enterprise and we tell them let's first go back to you as an individual mm. as we build up towards to the enterprise. Yes. So it's very, very important for us to when we talk about things like budget, when we when we start to engage with our customer, we ask them three things. Where you at right now? Mm. Can we take stock of where we are right now before mm. we look at where we want to go? Absolutely. And in that process we look at things like budgeting. And why is it important? Because we can't have a budget for an enterprise mm. or for uh, for something that you're trying to, to pursue without looking at the budget yourself. Yes. So budgets, yes, are very important. We have some templates. We share those with our customers because we, uh, again, it's, it's our business. So it's, it's one of the things we, the journey work our clients. So you have through. templates, budget yes. templates. We and, have budget templates. And budget support. Yes. Yes. And like I shared with you, a life skilling enterprise. We don't want just to give you that template. We want to make sure that we equip you. Mm. And by the way, every year we review with our customers. We just go back and say, okay, fine. This is what we agreed upon. Has anything changed? Uh, or maybe something has changed on our end. And we tell you, by the way, you need to start planning for this. Yeah. Six years ago, we weren't planning much for critical illness. Mm. Today, Mm. We have to plan for critical illness because mm. we, we can't do without it. Yes. Because and by the way, something very interesting mm -hmm. today, and it's the biggest fear right now in this country. If we do not create structures mm. around protecting our retirement savings, mm. which which is part of the journey as well, because when I, I work with my client, I want to see them through the whole process. Mm. From beginning to, to end, yeah. and how much, okay, let me ask, how much work does that make for you? In what sense? Uh, if you want to be with them from beginning to end, and uh, most of them probably are going to only offer you equity. Yes. And how, how do you run this business? <laughs> In the long run, it will pay off, yeah. but I'm just wondering, yeah. and I'm asking as a fellow business person yeah. who would want to know, yes. yes. 
Now, we don't need to be there all the time. Yes, yeah? it's not a lot. It's, it's not yeah. very labor intensive. Yeah, it's not okay. labor intensive. We our catch up meetings about what forty five minutes to an hour. Okay. It's probably once a month, depending on the project we are working on. Sometimes once a quarter, sometimes mm. actual reviews. But that that's not for fintech. That's pretty much for our clients. Yes. Uh, our entire client base. Yes. Now, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about, Tony, is when we go to, when we get to the issue of financing and budget support for digital transformation in finance, um, how much um, can we do, and, and, and for me, I'm asking this on behalf of everybody that's listening, one, there's, there's, there's the low appreciation for at the transformation that technology can bring on. Okay. There are people who hide behind the problems in AI. For instance, you know, you heard about the Australian lawyer who, for, who, who went to AI and got all these authorities yeah. and put them in a, in, a, in a case, in case documents, and the judge called him out because AI had creatively made up the cases. Wow. They didn't exist. Yeah. And now you know every lecturer is probably warning their students against using chat gpt yes. for and yet chat gpt is a was a newborn baby when he did that yeah it was an, it had just been developed i mean it was developed when in november last yeah. year yeah. and 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 by january it was giving this lawyer made up cases yes but i mean it was probably like two months old yeah now imagine and it's growing at a very high rate yes it's learning it's machine learning in fact twitter has stopped uh what is it called uh elon musk has stopped twitter from giving their data to this chat gpt thing because uh, this, uh, because it's now commercialized at oh. first it was supposed to be a social venture yeah. so when you look at the, the barriers to technological innovation especially in our conservative markets which are still governed by older people who don't understand technology yes. I mean you still have bosses in offices yes. that need tech yes. but the boss doesn't even write doesn't even type his own documents yes. he, he hand writes yes. them and someone uh, he thinks, you know, yes. he orders the secretary to type set. Yeah. So, what are we doing to educate uh, those that could actually provide finance for this kind of innovation in an area, in an environment, and a market where interest rates are very high? Um, you remember the red tape you are talking about about when it comes to creating uh, in insurance policies, for instance. Yes. We still have a lot of red tape around borrowing money, yes. accessing finance for simple businesses. Yes. Even where a property is over, should I say, under, uh, should I say, uh, the value is 800 million yes. and you're, you're, you're getting a loan of 60 million yes. <laughs> and they're really taking everything you've got. Yes. So what I'm asking is how do we move forward and what is a financial like you, a financial advisor like you, telling the government, the, the forces that be, in trying to ease access to finance, to drive innovation? It's a very long question. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get my head around it. Yes. Uh, but as I do that, let me just mention something about AI. Mm. You no, know, I, I, was, I was sitting with one of my clients, the doctor, and we're actually discussing about AI about last week. And he was telling me, Tony, do you know it's going to get a time. Mm. He's actually a surgeon. Mm. And he was telling me, do it. I feel because I was telling him about AI and the different things doing it. Even in our space, in financial yeah. advisory, yeah. It's, it's doing lots of things because machine learning lands and that's it. No mm. room for error and all those things. And he told me, Tony, do you mean it's going to get a time whereby someone will have to say, Doctor, don't touch me. I want that machine to, to do everything. Mm -hmm. And I said, hold on. Actually, it's very possible. <laughs> we won't get a time where but even the best doctors are saying, no, I want the machine. Yes. It, time is going to come. Absolutely. So what does that, what does that mean? Mm. We need to adapt. Very quickly. We need to adapt. Yes, there are risks. Huge risks, by the way. Very huge, huge risks. risks yeah. But, I mean, even life itself is a risk. So... I, I think the, the biggest challenge that we have is how do we regulate it? I think mm. for me, that's where we need to, to focus. And I think that's for the legal but guys. But can I, can, I can I be a bit of a, you know, 
can I be a bit of an activist yes. in this instance? Yes. The European Union just came out with their data yeah. laws, yes. their data protection laws. Yeah. Uganda had data protection laws long ago, way yeah. before stuff really started happening. And yet, the one thing that has led in this market yeah. has been uh, fintechs, has been, yeah. because in Africa, by the time we came up with things like mobile money, yes. nobody in the world knew what that was. Yeah. And, and, and mobile money thrived and, and grew the momentum it grew yeah. because there was no regulation to stifle yes. it. So I believe that, yes, sometimes regulation uh, follows development and innovation and maybe there's a cost to the taxman, but why shouldn't we first let the grass grow in, you yes. know the, the, the parable of the farmer yes. where jesus said let you know let let the seed grow with the weeds and then we shall weed after because yeah. when we are so concerned about regulation and and i know it's unfortunate that i'm a lawyer yes. and i'm saying this yeah. sometimes it, it stifles development and creativity yes. and people are also very very uh like the insurance companies, yes. the, the insurance environment, and all these other uh, sectors, yeah. they've been, they've had a lot of problems because of regulation. Yes. Uh, recently, even trusts now, yes. mutual trusts yes. are going to be taxed, yes. which which wasn't, yes. and I think that's why they were actually thriving because yeah. there was. So my question to you is: Should we? Shouldn't we, as people that want to promote innovation, especially in technology and even financing in that area, uh, ask for subsidies, advocate for periods of grace, advocate for um, interest, like low interest loans yeah. for financing in our national budgets and things like that? Because I think that, as you said, we have to embrace the fact that technology is here. Yeah. We have to embrace its benefits. Yes. yes, it has evils, but I think for somebody that has no food, they should not be worrying yeah. about the impact yeah. of overindulgence. Okay. I, I, I'm thinking that sometimes when we are talking about regulating tech in yes. Uganda, yeah. especially, yeah. we are, of course, there's, there, there's two things that we have to regulate that yes. is data protection. Yeah. And that is security, cyber security. Those two we, we cannot negotiate <laughs> with terrorists. Yes. But the issue of uh, regulating innovation, for me, it's like getting a gym membership yeah. when you are suffering from kwasha Okay. I don't know what you think. Well, I, I, what this, do you is, think? this is a personal opinion. Yes. Uh, I think this AI thing is yes. it's, it's one of the things that needs regulation. I think it's... <laughs> it, I think it's uh, I think it's if you move away from data protection and cyber security, yes. why else would you need regulation? No, because again, you, you look at, let me take in the finance space and yeah. why I think they've really struggled. You've heard mm. about crypto and all. Yeah. Crypto is an amazing. It's, yes, tell us more about crypto. It's, it's a, the blockchain technology is an amazing technology. But one of the things that I think it was undermined to be regulated, not to be regulated. Mm. Now, because of that, you, you're seeing actually what does they regulate very too great, late. Mm. Yeah, you, 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 you're seeing a very great innovation now because it was not regulated, people lost lots of money, and now there's a fear of tracking back. But why do you think people lost a lot of money? Anything, there's no regulation, you're bound to lose because there's no one. You uh, imagine a football, you imagine lack of a football. accountability. Look, imagine a football, you left soccer. You just turned that gun on me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Wow. I shall keep away from financials when it comes to, to legal arguments. <laughs> so the activist in me has been put to bed as I speak. Ladies and gentlemen, we're still asking on our Twitter space whether Tony loves the gym, eats one meal a day, or enjoys being in traffic jam. Please let us know what you think. I hope that our admin has put this on the page so you can make your, your, your poll. So far, I'm not seeing anybody answer. Please, those on Twitter spaces, remember to let us know what you think uh, Tony does, what does he love, and uh, then what does he hate. So as we continue, I would like to also say this is a moment for question and answer. Those of you that would have some questions, you can put them in our chat on the space, or you can 
put up uh, your hand in the space and you'll be given uh, speaking rights so you can ask your question or make your comments. Our topic today on the, finan on, on the FAT Faithful Available Teachable Talks is FinTech Innovation um, budget support for digital transformation in finance. We're trying to look at fintechs, uh, innovation, and how to ensure that these people access finance. And in the region, we have Tony Mugisha, who is working in various countries. Um, I wanted you to make a comparison, Tony, with what's happening in the US as opposed to what's happening here. I mean, we have multi-million dollar family estates yeah. out there. What do you think has worked as opposed to our markets here? Okay, well, um, I think also if to give it a fair, con a fair comparison, mm -hmm. the US market to the Ugandan market, the way I look at it, we are probably about 150 years behind. True. Okay. Which, like I shared with you earlier, it's actually a great advantage. And I, 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 we I, can I get it right. Definitely. It's like I, us getting oil yes, yesterday. Yes, when you see all these things and say, wow, yeah. I think we, we have a great chance at, at, at everything. Yes. But that said as well, it, it, it has a... It has a a double-edged sword. It, yes. <laughs> but I think the, the great lessons we need to take away, and when I work with families here, in, mm. I, like I've emphasized, when we look at, when we look at capital, Yes. People think about financial capital. That's what we find. We are finding about financial capital, financial capital. Many times I speak to business But capital owners. is also human resource. Absolutely. Actually, in financial planning, we look at three types of capital. Intellectual. Human capital, mm. which are the people. Yeah. Intellectual capital. Yeah. And then the financial capital. Mm. By the way, on all the three, families that have been able to preserve wealth for a long period of time have focused on the two. Intellectual and human. Yes, that's why you see ah. the hedge funds are huge in the US. Yeah. Because they even have sourced the financial. The financial capital. capital They're saying yeah. that you know, it doesn't oh. matter what kind of money you have. Yeah. Provided you're not developing the human capital and intellectual capital, chances are high it will be wiped out. So that's so, a learning from those markets. Yes. Yes. But then, as families here, what are we doing? Mm. What are we doing when we, when it comes to our families? We're asking you. Yeah. <laughs> What is focusing. your observation? People are focusing a lot on financial capital. Mm. That's where all they want the money. And oh yes, yes, money and the assets. So tell me, how would you focus? What What are some of the strategies you can do yes. to focus on the right thing? We have a great opportunity, like I shared with you, because we 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 are. We are about 150 years. Yes. So what, some, of, some of the things that we do with the first-time wealth creators, because most of the uh, families that are here are first-time mm. wealth creators. Mm. So we say that, listen, you are blessed to have to be the first-time wealth creator. You can actually give a direction. Yes. Okay? And as you're giving this direction, we want you to focus it in this. In this area. In this area. Mm. And we give our reasons why. Mm. Why we believe if they do that, we have a great shot at maybe preserving that wealth for maybe 40 or 50 years. Yes. Okay? As opposed to another direction because what happens, the first generation creates, second generation grows, first creates, second, second grows, grows, third splits. Ah. Uh, isn't that what happens to our land tenure as well? Most of what, that's what is happening. Yes. But how about if you think differently? Who is creating this? You've talked about capital financial intellectual you've not talked about like real estate the, the land and yes. stuff like that what capital is that well there are only five asset classes yes globally anywhere yes. you go yes. there's property property equity equity bonds commodities yes. and cash yes so any asset you have if you have a qualified financial advisor they'll be able to plot it in those five in, asset in classes. those five asset classes That's so it. this is property now the rule of thumb is you should play in at least three asset classes oh yes interesting and no asset class should have exceeded for please say that again i hope that we can have it put in our twitter space right there are only uh -huh. five asset classes globally yes it's property property why properties because one of the longest assets that has been able to preserve wealth and has been able to stand against inflation over a period of time. It keeps growing, yeah. Everyone knows about that. There's mm. good property and bad property. Does it have disadvantages? Yes, it also has disadvantages. And risk. No one ever talks about the, the disadvantages. For our clients, at least we show them the mm. disadvantages. Mm. Second, we have the equities. Equities, yeah. They can go up and down. Are they good? Yes. They Can have they be bad? Risk. Absolutely. 
we have commodities in Uganda's mm. context anything to do with farming falls under commodities mm. that is trees animals name it mm. falls under commodities mm. and then we have do uh, my saucepans at home fall under commodities uh, no <laughs> <laughs> it has to be it has to have a resale value in, in Uganda it's really about farming that falls under commodities when you go to other markets like in other Asia, markets gold. oh yeah people hold a lot of gold people in Asia. hold yeah Lot of gold. Actually, you know we have a lot of gold in Uganda, but because uh, some other people are supposed to certify it, yes. it has no value in our homes, right? Uh huh. So uh, that's a topic as well. Yeah, that's a whole but, other topic. Yes, but yes. actually, when uh, some countries actually have gold accounts, mm. like in the UAE, you actually have to really? have a gold account, yeah. and it's in cages and it's converted to. You yes. can actually move. It's very interesting. You should pick interest in that and, yes. and, and find more about it. Mm. So it's property, equities, bonds, commodities, and cash. Mm. By cash, I mean fixed deposits, um, uh, unit trusts, mm. uh, annuities, life insurance. Mm. Those are all instruments of cash. Mm. So, in all the assets, all assets that you hold yes. in your lifetime mm. will, hold, will fall under those five asset classes. Now, one of the things that we track as financial advisors is how is your portfolio standing? The recommendation is at least you should be playing in three asset classes, mm. which is subject to one's preference i can love property more than uh, than, than equities commodities. but should just be playing in three asset classes why yes. because if you're playing in only one asset class your portfolio is at a risk mm. and no asset class should ever exceed 40 percent to to hedge your risk absolutely yes yes so mm. once you so, so that, that's under the asset <laughs> classes but it's not under the our, our social security right now it's under cash it's under cash NSSF. a lot of it mm. no there's yeah. cash no no no, no, no. i'm, I'm talking about of... my as a personal thing yes. for me yeah. i'm saying if our ns if our fund right now yes were being assessed yes. with how they invest uh -huh. I, are they following the 40 percent rule no. Yeah, I know they're not. They're not. So that's something that you might want to advise. We have okay, actually moving on. Some. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, I like that advice, you know. So we have we have uh, forty percent of that people who have responded say you love working out. Forty percent say you take one meal a day. And only 20% believe the whole traffic story. So you're going to have to tell us the truth, but not now. <laughs> not now. Uh, are there any people that are interested in speaking? Do we have any speakers uh, who would like? Uh, at this point, I'd like to recognize uh, our present, uh, uh, people who are present. Uh, we have somebody from Vital Life called Dr. Mirembe Joel. Thank you so much uh, for, for being with us. We have Henry Agasa, who's a dad entrepreneur and social worker. We're, we're happy to have you. Uh, we have Otule, um, who's an agripreneur. So we have an agripreneur here in technology. Uh -huh. And uh, we're going for another break. And I just want to say uh, thank you, Tony. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. And when we get back, uh, actually, no, before we get back, I would love Tony to give us his big reveal. What is true and what's a lie? Okay. Now? Yes. Ah, okay. So I, I, I actually don't like working out. Yes. Uh, and I so, so <laughs> you love traffic jam wow <laughs> yeah so I don't, I don't like working out yes I do not eat one meal a day mm -hmm. I enjoy my food I like like you enjoy your food like, like any average like, Ugandan yes. yes and uh, what's the third one the third one the traffic I hate being in traffic oh so so there were lies there were two lies there are two lies and one and one truth yes so so the lies were about the food yes and they were about no i don't like sitting in traffic uh -huh. i don't work out but i enjoy my food so i don't eat one meal a day i eat more than one meal a so day. there were all three lies no yes because you yes. said you eat one meal a day okay give me five for tricking us <laughs> <laughs> okay so well i guess tony is a typical finance person 
the odds were against us we were going to fail <laughs> or we were going to fail so ladies and gentlemen that's tony mugisha from Eton capital talking about digital transformation in finance and helping uh, fintechs access financing and also get budget support uh, we have been uh, at the fat talks faithful available teachable i want to thank everybody we don't have more questions i want to thank everybody who's been here i want to thank smart 24 tv uh, for being a support and sponsor uh, we are available on dstv this will be available on their youtube account online and on the fidelity leadership institute youtube uh, we shall also share it with Aton capital socials as as i also encourage you to go to our twitter space uh, the recording will remain live I want to thank you all for being present today, the people on our Twitter space and physically on TV. I also want to thank Tony Mugisha. It has been really um, fantastic. We are inspired that someone as young as you is causing the change that you're causing. Barack Obama said uh, you should be the change you want to see and yeah. I think that you're living that dream. Thank Your you four mom. children are wonderful thank you, thank and you, I mom. think wonderfully provided for in this case. So ladies and gentlemen, please remember to build your capital. Yeah. Remember to hedge your risk. I think these are some of the things we've learned. Remember to budget and manage your own finances in order to be able to manage even more. Yeah. And remember that, yes, even though we are 150 years older, younger than the US, we can get where they are very fast and do very well because we have a young, fertile environment within so which to can. grow. And remember to look for Ayton Capital when you want financial services in order to grow your family business. It's been Fiona Wall from the Fidelis Leadership Institute with Tony Mugisha from Ayton Capital bringing you the Fat Talks. Thank you very much and have a fantastic weekend.